Good evening. We welcome you to this inaugural Freedom Day observance. Before we begin tonight, it's my pleasure to make introductions to our elected officials who are with us. I'll make introductions and then we'll give one round of applause at the end there. Tonight, representing our Onslow County Commissioners, we're pleased to have with us Mr. Royce Bennett. Commissioner Royce Bennett serves as a member of the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee, and we're pleased to have you with us tonight, sir. Also tonight, we're pleased to have Mr. Commissioner Robin Knapp. Mr. Knapp, you'll please stand. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you with us here. We also have with, have with us tonight one of our former county commissioners, Mr. Ernie Wright. Mr. Wright, thank you for joining us tonight, sir. Tonight, representing our Onslow County Board of Education, my pleasure to introduce Mr. Earl Taylor, uh, Board Member Earl Taylor. Thank you for joining us tonight. Reverend Joel Churchwell, Board Member of Onslow County School Board. Thank you for joining us tonight, sir. I'm very pleased tonight to have with us a former Onslow County Board Member who served with distinction and really set a legacy of her service there, Miss Margaret Brown. Miss Brown, thank you for joining us tonight. It's always a pleasure to have with us in our midst our Honorable Judge Hardison. Judge Hardison, thank you for your attendance tonight, sir. Representing City Council tonight, we're pleased to have with us our Mayor, Mayor Sammy Phillips. Thank you for you joining us tonight, sir. Mayor Pro Tim, Michael Lazar, thank you for your attendance tonight, sir. Council Member Drone Willingham, thank you for your attendance tonight, sir. And again, it's a pleasure to have with us a, one of our former council members who, again, served with distinction, honor, and support, and has also been a part of a legacy of support for this sit great city here, uh, former council member Fannie Coleman. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's give all our elected officials a round of applause. Again, welcome to our inaugural Freedom Day observance. I am joined by other members of the Civic Affairs Committee and invited guests who will tell the story of how Jacksonville came to observe Freedom Day and how this 151-year-old amendment to our Constitution applies to our current times. We welcome all those who participate in our ceremony tonight. We welcome our elected officials who are present and all those who cherish and defend freedom. Slightly more than 20 years ago, the predecessors of the Onslow County Civic Affairs Committee began work to care for those deployed during Desert Storm and Desert Shield. Those actions later came to be embodied in what would become the motto for the city of Jacksonville as a caring community. It also became one of the reasons that our community won the designation as an all-American city. That designation came in part as a result of a review of our community's civic infrastructure. That led to the continuation of the committee and the challenge of its founders and is continually in, through its continual involvement in our civic education, civic affairs grouping here. That charter made the decision of this committee easy when asked to consider an observance of Freedom Day. And so it is that on the second Monday in December, at this time and this place that we give honor to the passage 151 years ago of the 13th Amendment. This evening, members of the Civic Affairs Committee and our invited guests will help connect this powerful amendment to our culture today. To give blessings to this observance is the pastor of one of the oldest congregations in our county, St. Julia AME Zion Church, a former social worker the Reverend Dr. Amy Spahn Cicerone has served this congregation since March 2nd, 2014. It's a pleasure to have Reverend Cicerone join us for our invocation. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. It is indeed a pleasure and a privilege to be in this place on this day at this hour. We thank you, O oh God, for the occasion for which we gather as we have come to recognize and observe Freedom Day. We thank you, O oh God, for planning it in the hearts of men and women that we would celebrate a day that you, O oh God, endorse. 
For you declare in your word that whom the Son has set free, he is free indeed. You have always been a God who's on the side of justice and fairness and equality. And God, we come before your presence today because we realize that the fight for freedom continues. Whether it is in slave labor, child labor, human trafficking. It is the same atrocity similar to that of the African slave that took place in this country. And now, God, we ask that you would bless all that we do here on today. We ask that as we look forward to freeing those that are trapped in systems of slavery today, that we not forget the atrocities of yesterday. We ask, oh God, your blessings upon those that are part of the service, that the words of their mouths and the meditation of their hearts will be found acceptable in your sight. And as you lift us here in Jacksonville, the first city to observe such, O oh God, we decree and declare that this is not the end. We declare that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what you shall do, because you have the power to move Freedom Day beyond Jacksonville and to make it something even greater. We thank you. We trust you. We bless your holy and righteous name. We call it all done. In the mighty name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Last month, the National Civic League endorsed the concept of National Freedom Day. That effort was led by Jacksonville City Council members Jerome Willingham and Angela Washington. They advanced this during a national conference after having successfully advancing this cause before the Jacksonville City Council. To give more of the background, Councilman Member Jerome Willingham. Good evening. Throughout this journey, the question kept popping up, why can't you get over slavery. First, we cannot ignore that it exists today. Second, just like the 4th of July holiday does not celebrate colonialism, it celebrates independence. We are not celebrating slavery. We're celebrating freedom and 151 years of it. In the 1940s, Richard R. Wright Sr. led the effort to recognize the 13th Amendment as a national holiday. Born a slave in 1855, he became a bank owner, the first black to reach the rank of paymaster in the United States Army, the highest ranking black officer at the time of the Spanish-American War, and the first president of what is now Savannah State University. He su succeeded with an observance, but there was no holiday. Further, the Emancipation Proclamation didn't free all slaves and did not make slavery illegal throughout the United States. The 13th Amendment did. As the first city to adopt a holiday honoring the 13th Amendment, and with the success of the National League of Cities adoption of the resolution to make Freedom Day, a national holiday. Jacksonville has assumed the leadership role in bringing this deserved recognition, as well as leading the fight against human trafficking. African American slavery was one of the greatest instances of man's inhumanity to man. However, Americans United and ended institutional state and federal government sponsored slavery that effort culminated with the enactment of the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution almost 100 years after America got its freedom or independence. Modern day slavery is not institutional slavery. Modern slavery is perpetrated by individuals and criminal enterprises committed to violating human decency and the very laws enabled by the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment was born out of African-American pain to address that misery. 
However, the 13th Amendment is greater than any one ethnic group. No one ethnic group is mentioned in the 13th Amendment. The Republicans of Lincoln initiated it. The former Confederate states adopted it. The Democrats of Kennedy sought greater perfection. It is and was an American effort. This is an American holiday. The brilliance of the founding documents is not that they anticipated every possible future situation. The beauty is that the founders were smart enough to recognize their limitations. So our Constitution begins with in order to form a more perfect union. That recognition of imperfection is a realization that people and things might not be as they should be, but we live in a country where it is okay to get it right, to change, and to amend to get it right, to become more perfect. Therefore, our Constitution allows for amendments so that we can become more perfect. The 13th Amendment corrects a hypocritical flaw. It also, like every other amendment, has enabling provisions like Section 2, which allow Congress to pass laws so that we may become more perfect. It is directly because we have the 13th Amendment that we now have both state and federal laws which will help us eradicate human trafficking. That the slavery of human trafficking continues to exist attests to the fact that our society is not perfect. But this holiday is a good effort. The Onslow County Civic Affairs Committee has made an outstanding effort our gathering here tonight is a good effort. So don't ever let perfection be the enemy of the good. Because we are not perfect, because our Constitution was not perfect, don't allow immobilization and complacency to win. As we honored the slaves who suffered, as we honored the troops who fought for freedom, including the Muffet Port Marines who fought abroad while carrying the passport of second-class citizenship, as we honor every legislator who cared, and as we honor and as we commit to eradicating the legacy of slavery that scourge human trafficking, I thank each and every one of you for joining us as we strive toward a more perfect union. We have to be united. The slavery of today is not restricted to race. We all could be affected. Perhaps we are involved out of impact or empathy. Impact because it affected our heritage. Empathy because we would never want slavery imposed upon anyone else. Notwithstanding our perspectives, we all have the same mission, the eradication of modern slavery, human trafficking. Thank you all so much. In 1863, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, so shall be then thenceforward and forever free. A civil war ensued. The abolishment of slavery was the issue. <coughs> Lincoln recognized that the Emancipation Proclamation would have to be followed by a constitutional amendment in order to guarantee the abolishment of slavery.
Because the Emancipation Proclamation did not end slavery alone, a constitutional amendment would be necessary to assure this. It passed the Senate on April 8, 1864, and the House on January 31, 1865. On February 1, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln approved the joint resolution of Congress submitting the proposed amendment to the state legislatures. When Georgia ratified it on December 6, 1865, the institution of slavery officially ceased to exist legally in the United States. Here's a simple text of the amendment that accomplished that mission. The 13th Amendment, Section 1, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Section 2, Congress shall have the power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. <clears throat> Here are sections of the resolution establishing today as a holiday for the Jacksonville City Council. Whereas Congress passed the 13th Amendment and it was ratified by the required number of states on de December the 6th, 1865. Whereas President Abraham Lincoln's resolution to adopt the 13th Amendment is celebrated as an observance on the 1st of February, but is not a holiday. Whereas, liberated countries customarily celebrate their independence with a national holiday. Whereas, human freedom is an inalienable right superior to any other. Whereas, human bondage and trafficking continues to be an epidemic problem worldwide. Whereas, the United States of America has deployed its armed forces to promote and establish freedom around the world. Whereas, it behooves every respectable society to celebrate human freedom and to commit to ensuring human freedom everywhere. It is therefore resolved that the adoption and enactment of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution should be celebrated as a holiday in Jacksonville, North Carolina to be celebrated on the second Monday of December, which will always fall between the day the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution was ratified by the states and the date of the proclamation of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. It is further resolved by the City Council to approve the second Monday of December as a city holiday adopted by the Jacksonville City Council in regular session on the 21st day of June, 2016. Every day we go about our lives driven by routine and blindfolded to the realities of the world around us. Our vision is clouded by the very normalcy we take for granted. Countless victims of human trafficking walk among us, seemingly invisible. Until now. The Blue Campaign provides a unified voice for those who oppose the heinous crime of human trafficking. Whether it's forced labor, domestic servitude, or the sex trade, it's time we open our eyes. Sorry, I didn't even see you. No one ever does. Learn what you can do to help by visiting dhs.gov slash blue campaign. Good evening. Good evening. Our keynote speaker this evening is Sarah Tellis. She's the founder of True Justice International, an organization supporting international efforts to end human trafficking with locations in New Bern and here in Jacksonville. Mrs. Tellis is a passionate advocate and has been actively involved in national and international medical missions for 15 years. She serves on the North Carolina Human Trafficking Commission and has been a strong voice 
in educating the public in North Carolina and throughout the world about the dangers of human trafficking, its impact on women, children, and families. Mrs. Tellis has also served as the Vice President of the Eastern Pregnancy Information Center's Board of Directors. She resides in New Bern, North Carolina with her husband, Dr. Angelo Tellis, and their three children. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Sarah Tellis. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you, Jacksonville City Councilman, for the opportunity to share my heart and passion, and it's an honor to be a part of this inaugural service for Freedom Day. William Wilberforce, the great Christian statesman in England who worked tirelessly to eradicate the African slave trade, once said, you may choose to look the other way, but you can never again say you didn't know. Today, the city of Jacksonville has chosen not to look the other way, but instead stand in the face of injustice, address it with truth, and unite together to make a difference. It is truly an honor to be here with you to celebrate freedom. I want to acknowledge the importance of Freedom Day, and I truly thank you for making a stand to make a difference in the United States and beyond. It is an opportunity for us to shine the light on this dark slavery, this dark issue of slavery that remains in this world today. Tonight, all of you that are gathered here aren't just here to make a difference. You're here to lead the difference. Today, we, we live in a world where there are between 27 million people enslaved and 30 million people enslaved. It's hard to get an exact count because, again, this is an issue held in darkness. Many cases come from countries such as India, Thailand, Greece, Honduras, China. I started my own journey uncovering the horrors of human trafficking while on my own mission trip to Greece. My life was changed forever when I met face-to-face -face with women suffering from exploitation and abuse. It was the heartache of hearing them say they're not worth anything and the visual pain on their faces that has kept me on my knees since 2011 and I believe will keep me on my knees for a lifetime. It was that experience in the brothels of Athens, Greece that I also experienced the miracles of prayer. The miracle of prayer that that night brought two young ladies to freedom. And it's that experience on those dark streets that I felt the call of God call me to persevere in rescuing, restoring, and raising up those that have suffered such atrocities. When I returned from Greece, I started meeting in North Carolina with government leaders and researching what was happening in our own country. It was at that time that I discovered that North Carolina was number six in the nation with the most human trafficking cases. Wow. These cases weren't just being accounted for in larger cities such as Charlotte and Raleigh, but these cases were happening right here in eastern North Carolina. Human trafficking, modern-day slavery knows no boundaries. It affects people from all socioeconomic and racial backgrounds. Human trafficking is the exploitation of vulnerability, put very simply. And traffickers are masterminds at recognizing weakness and manipulating people for their personal gain. These traffickers, whether they are men or, guess what, whether they're women, are willing to exploit people to meet the demand in society. You see, in our society today, there's an increased exposure of pornography. And from the exposure and the degradation of people, there is a huge demand for the commercial sex industry, which is a multi-billion dollar business. But are the traffickers the only criminals involved in these cases? What about those who purchase the sex or exploit them for labor? In order to properly address the crisis of today, we must address ending the demand. Tonight, I want to applaud the local Jacksonville and Onslow County Police Departments that are on the front lines addressing this issue. 
I recently had a discussion with Jacksonville's P chief of police. He told me that there are many cases of human tra trafficking right here in Jacksonville and that his team is working hard on addressing the issues. Just recently, that police department had two cases to come about. They were able to assist survivors of one case and make appropriate arrest. But in the other case, I'm sad to say, these two women from an Asian country were too afraid for their life and with the difficulties of communication, were not able to comply with the investigation. These two women are still trapped in the nightmare of sex trafficking. I also want to recognize tonight, and again, I believe it confirms the perfect timing of this event, a local arrest made by the Onslow Sheriff's Department last week. As we read in the newspaper, and many of us began to do our own research and uncovering that there was a man that was trafficking a child in our very area. And I'm glad to say that the Onslow police have kept him behind bars and that child is now free. Our team at True Justice International is honored to partner with local law enforcement to address cases and assist survivors into becoming thrivers. We began to expand our mission into Jacksonville about a year ago when we were working with a local survivor. To protect her identity, I'll call her Julie. Julie was trafficked here in Onslow County from the age of nine until the age of 18. She was part of an organized crime that unfortunately didn't just involve Julie, but involved many other young girls. I'm happy to say that Julie was able to get free from the situation and her perpetrators spent some time in jail, unfortunately not long enough because they're out today. It has been our privilege at True Justice International to walk beside Julie in her healing process over the next year. And we are seeing amazing things in her life and expect more. Tonight we come together to recognize that it is an epidemic in our land. But did you know that the average age of a person exploited in sex trafficking is 12 to 14 years old? Did you know that the fastest growing crime in the world is child pornography? Yes, we have a crisis. We have a criminal crisis as human trafficking, which includes labor and sex trafficking, ranks number two in the most criminal activity just behind the trafficking of drugs. But tonight we want to recognize that we also have a social crisis as we ask ourselves, who is buying these victims and exploiting them for their own personal benefit. Again, ending the demand is so important. We must end human trafficking. People are not for sale. How can we respond to this call? How can we impact the end of human trafficking? We've talked about this crisis, but where is hope? May I suggest that hope is in this room, and it begins with you, and it begins with me. Again, looking back in history with William Wilberforce, he outlined three things that people can do to end slavery. Pray, raise awareness, and give. Today, as modern-day slavery continues to thrive, these same three responses are very important and need to be addressed in our society. How are some ways we can today resolve to make a difference? Prayer. All of us in this room could commit to praying. And praying because this subject is beyond ourself. As I said, this is a crisis of epidemic proportion. I can't sit down and download an idea of strategy without first understanding that this has got to be coming from a supreme being, our God, who knows intimately the details going on in each case, in each heart. The other situation is this is a hard topic. It's not fun talking about this at all. And you know what? I've often heard it said that human trafficking isn't just a criminal problem, but it's a love problem. 
And when we want to address the problems of today, we have to get love from the God of love downloaded in our hearts and minds through prayer. So I want to challenge you all tonight to include human trafficking in your daily prayers. Inspire your churches to get involved and perhaps even start a prayer group. Here in Jacksonville, in the first is the December, January 5th, we're going to start our own prayer group at our office at 825 Gum Branch. You are welcome to join us and find out more information about our prayer event that we'll be having every week starting in January. Another way that you can become involved is through raising awareness. And tonight, I want to ask that everyone at this event please leave with one of our warning sign cards. These warning sign cards show you signs of trafficking and signs of a trafficker. They also give you a hotline number that you can call so that you can report the information that you have gained so that um, this national hotline can employ the frontline responders, which are our local police departments. So please, everyone take one of these cards and upload that phone number and that text be free in your cell phone so you don't forget the importance of alerting the proper authorities. What else can we do to raise awareness? Well, look at this event tonight. It's absolutely amazing. And I'm sure that events like this are going to continue to spark, and I'm excited to continue to partner with the city of Jacksonville with more events in January and February. And we have, through True Justice International, our event this coming January 14th. It's called Steps to Freedom. If you are a runner and want to join us for that, let's raise awareness by having a run and raise money and awareness in our community to see more women and children be set free. Another thing that we must start talking about in raising awareness on this issue is how pornography affects this world today. It is very important that we protect our children from pornographers because they target our kids age 7 to 10. And we have worked with many, many cases counseling families through the crisis of pornography addiction at such a young age. We also must safeguard our marriages from the destruction means of pornography. And here's some ways you can do that. True Justice International suggests that you download protection for your computers. There are two um, programs that we recommend. One is Covenant Eyes, so you can Google Covenant Eyes and they have an entire program of accountability and protection you can download. And the other one is OpenDNS.org. So anyone, you can come up to us afterwards and we can um, connect you with the resources we have. Another resource that we have is FreeToWork.org and that is going to educate us on how to buy cautiously. You see, certain companies and certain countries don't have laws in place to protect their people from slave labor, from chocolate to diamonds, clothing, and all types of apparel. Slave labor is prevalent around the world and even here in the United States. And last, how can we give? There's so many ways that we can give, whether it's financial or volunteering your time. And that's one of the best ways that we can get involved. In our organization, we even have programs where we connect families after they're educated to those kids that have aged out of the foster care system and are homeless and need a safe place to live so that they can finish high school. Maybe you're even called to become a foster parent or donate items that you have in your home to support the care and restoration of those women and children that we serve. I think tonight we can all think of something that we can do, a take home, so that our heart isn't just broken, but we're empowered to make a difference. In closing, I want to share a quote from Harriet Tubman, my personal hero since second grade. I believe she would be honored to be a part of this historical event, as Tubman was not only a freed slave, but she spent many years leading others to freedom risking her own life and safety. Tonight, she speaks to us to encourage us to validate the move forward that the city of Jacksonville has made for North Carolina and beyond. She says, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember, you have the strength 
within you the patience and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Tonight we honor that a dream has become reality with the inaugural event of Freedom Day. And because of the perseverance and the passion represented in this room, there will be change in the world. Harriet Tubman had a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream. And tonight, we have a dream. Let's let our dreams grow. And may freedom impact our city, our state, our country, and our world. Thank you.
The Defense Department observes National Slavery and Human Trafficking Prevention Month in January. Sam Youssef, the DOD's Combating Trafficking in Persons Program Manager, says while the indicators might be obvious to some, the Defense Department's training helps to alert employees to human trafficking scenarios. You see something that could be an inhumane living condition, you wouldn't think much of it. Maybe um, before you take our training, you'd say, oh, that's you know a bad living condition. But through uh, increased awareness, you're able to connect the dots a little more and then obviously report to the DOD Inspector General um, for further investigation as necessary. Now, I, I do not use that word slavery lightly. It, it evokes, obviously, one of the most painful chapters in our nation's history. But around the world, there's no denying the awful reality. When a man desperate for work finds himself in a factory or on a fishing boat or in a field, working, toiling for little or no pay and beaten if he tries to escape, that is slavery. When a woman is locked in a sweatshop or trapped in a home as a domestic servant, alone and abused, and incapable of leaving, that's slavery. When a little boy is kidnapped, turned into a child soldier, forced to kill or be killed, that's slavery. When a little girl is sold by her impoverished family, the girl's my daughter's age, runs away from home or is lured by the false promise of a better life and then imprisoned in a brothel and tortured if she resists, that's slavery. It is barbaric and it is evil and it has no place in a civilized world. The notion of modern day slavery is one that uh, touches everybody's conscience and it is one of just fundamental basic human decency. And the fact is that human trafficking is a multi-billion dollar criminal enterprise. It's assault on human rights and it's a threat to global stability. It undermines the rule of law, it breeds corruption, it spreads disease, it widens the gap between the haves and the haves nots, and it tears whole families apart. So it's counter to every single thing that we are trying to accomplish in the field of development and everything that we would like to see in our communities. system under which people are treated as property, to be bought, sold, forced to work. Millions. That's the number of slaves today. Billions. More money than you can comprehend. That's what's being made off of slaves each year worldwide. What if the land of the free is the home of the slave. For hundreds of thousands of people living here on American soil, on American streets, in American neighborhoods, this is a reality. We've been taught that slavery ended in 1865, but today has a different name, human trafficking. People from other countries are being brought here to be exploited, and yet, the majority of traffic victims in our country are Americans. Many of whom are being exploited for sex. I need you to understand, the average age of these victims is 13 years old. These are our friends. They're your classmates. It's affecting so many people in so many lives. What do we do about it? How do we help this? How do we fix it? You gotta know what's going on. You gotta see what's happening around you. You can choose to fight back. It stops with you. It stops with us. It stops with me.
human trafficking continues today, and it may even make headlines if and when it's discovered. Frequently, we fail to see the effects, and frequently we fail to recognize the consequences. So to advance a discussion on human trafficking, the ONZO Civic Affairs Committee will hold a community discussion. We want to invite you to watch an informative video, and then, as a community, we'll discuss the video, the issues, and the challenges that surround modern slavery. We desire this to be a dialogue to advance outstanding, excuse me, understanding of human trafficking. We desire this to help us learn of the consequences of human trafficking. And we desire this to help understand how we as a community together can respond. We wish to issue a call to action to you all tonight and throughout Onslow County to join us. Please watch for details on this important opportunity. Good evening. Let us pray. O eternal God, mighty in power and majesty, we rejoice in your presence that we are able to enjoy freedom to worship, to speak, to live, to laugh, and to prosper. O oh God, we created all peoples in your image. We thank you for the wonderful diversity of races and cultures in this world. O oh mighty God, protector of the helpless and oppressed, we come to you and offer our prayer of sorrow for those victims of human trafficking and slavery. Many, excuse me, may they find comfort in the shelter of your embrace and strength in the power of your name. We pray an end to the sickness of human trafficking and slavery. We pray for a new day that is touched with the radiant and lasting hope of the sun, free from oppression and pain that would offer an afflict on one another. In all these things we say, amen. amen. What a powerful evening we have had the opportunity to be a part of tonight here. And before I begin our dismissal, I have uh, in my introduction and introductions of individuals, my apology for the following omission there. For with us tonight is also another individual who has served to really quilt the fabric of support and advocacy as an educator, as a community advocate, and as also a former elected state legislator from Onslow County. Tonight, Ms. Kiva Clark, if you'll please stand. My apologies for your mission tonight, the introduction. Thank you. In our dismissal, let us reflect on the impact of this simple amendment and the struggle to end of human bondage today. Members of the Civic Affairs Committee have adopted this task as part of our efforts to improve civic education in our community. We do encourage you to continue your concern for human trafficking by attending our community discussion in January and to become further involved in your community to support these efforts. We thank you for your participation and hope that all of us use the compassion of this season to consider today's victims of human trafficking. Good evening.